says, transform yourself into a new person. Do this by changing. And you will know how God's will for you is so powerful, perfect, pleasing, and good. A journey, a journey of great transformation. You have a little trouble? A little short out, maybe? No? You got it? All right. Well, we're on this wonderful journey, this exciting place that we're on. Wow, we've come to an incredible place. That love train has taken off, hasn't it? Do you feel it? wonderful way. The scripture is inviting us to this journey to accept that ride on the love train. You got your ticket in hand for God's gospel. The good news is they're inviting us to this transformational journey. Now, there was a guy who had a parrot. And that parrot had the most foul language and the worst attitude. He tried so hard to try to change that parrot. Change its language, change the way it spoke, change the way it just acted. It was everything he could do. And finally, in great frustration, he just grabbed that bird and shoved it in the freezer. Closed the door, slammed it, and that bird was, you know, squawking and flopping all around and shivering in the cold. And after a few minutes, his heart of compassion came onto him, and he opened up the, fr the freezer door, pulled that bird out. Of course, the bird, in great exasperation, finally says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll change my thinking. I'll change my attitude. I'll change my ways. Well, suddenly the bird owner thought for a moment, hmm, what really worked? What happened? The parrot, trying to catch his breath, simply says, and by the way, what did the chicken do? <laughs> what does it take to change the world? What does it take to change attitudes? What does it take to inspire transformation? What does it take for this scripture text to be ours, to be alive and real within our lives? It's a change of our consciousness. It's a change of our thinking. It's a change of our outlook that's necessary. Now today I'm not gonna shove you all in a freezer to try to get you to change. I'm not gonna lock you up inside a refrigerator door and hold you there until you do something. I hope to inspire you you see that God's divine plan is that transformation within our own lives and that when we make a conscious desire to change, we become world changers. Even better yet, you know what we become? Rainmakers. Rainmakers, that's right. Rainmakers are those people who make something happen in life. In the business realm, people will say, wow, he's a real rainmaker. Boy, he could take this company and transform it. He knows how to make some money. He knows how to change what may be in a dying business venture into something fabulous. He can make it rain. How wonderful that is. In the Native American culture, it was that which was the rainmaker that was called upon in times of great drought. They knew that there were those who people could dance, dance with such passion, dance with such belief, dance with such fervency within our lives. Well, what happened? They were rainmakers. A great tradition came about. And that became the analogy for us today in the world of life and our spiritual life and our journey today as being a rainmaker, making something happen within our lives. Well, it begins with an inner work for us, first and foremost. The inner work and the work you're doing today, right here and now, this spiritual journey that you're on and your spiritual expression and the experience that you're having in this very moment we're working on, that we're doing, and how important that is, that we all are doing that inner work on a consistent, regular basis. Quite often, I'll call on congregants and friends of this church and say, hey, we've missed you. Do you know what the number one response I get on the, on the phone when I ask this question? Anyone know what the one, number one response would be? Think about it. It's, I'm too busy. You know what, Pastor? I've been so busy. I've been doing this, I've been doing that. I haven't had the chance. I, I, I'm so busy in my world, in my life, I haven't a chance to even breathe. It's kind of strange that someone would say, I'm too busy to do the inner work. It's kind of like a person saying, I'm just too busy to stop at the gas station. I'm just going to keep on driving. I'm going to keep driving my car. I'm too busy to stop for gas. And you wonder, well, where are you going to get? Where are you going to go? Because sooner or later, you run out. It's those people who kind of look at their gas tank and they monitor in such a way that they, when they're getting about half, half a tank, they're already pulling over to get refilled. Those are the people who don't end up on the right roadside calling for the hero truck to come and resurrect them. You see, in our spiritual life, it's the same way. It's that inner work that we're called to do that begins the power of becoming the rainmaker, 
that we're called to be. There's a beautiful passage in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, that is the call that we should acknowledge. It's a passage that says we all should be seeking God. Why? Because God is easy to be found. Very easy. And in Acts 17, it unfolds how simple it is because the spirit of the divine, that presence of God, is right here. Right here. Easy to be found. Yet so often we're looking everywhere else, we forget that how simple it is just to take some time out to just say, I acknowledge the divine presence right here within me. I acknowledge that it's here and that it is not off in a distant place. I'm not separated or removed. Today we're acknowledging the very message of Stonewall as in our community. That Stonewall riot that says, you know what, we acknowledge that we're all equal, that we're one. And that though there may be those who may want to bring about oppression and division and separation, we rise up with this message. Everyone is included and everyone is equal. There is no difference. When we realize that, we see the power of this passage. God is so close, it's within you, within you, within you, within me, within each and every one of us. And when we acknowledge that, here's the beauty. It says we acknowledge God within us because it is God in God that you live, in God that you live, and you move and have your being, for you are the very offspring of God. Wow. You live. There's a power of life in God. You have your very, and you move. Oh, that very essence of, of moving, walking in this world. We move within the very power and presence of God. And our very being is found within that. This whole text is inviting us then to say, when you acknowledge, do the inner work, you got to get ready for something amazing to happen. If you're going to be a rainmaker, you got to be ready for good things to unfold. You've got to spend that time in preparation. How important it is that we think of our spiritual lives being that which we would really invest in. Now, some of you getting ready, I've heard of some people spending nine hours getting their weed put together in a salon. I've heard of some people saying, you know what, I've got, it takes me, you know, hours to get my makeup on, to get my this on, to get my that on, to get my corset scrunched in, to get my, you know, pantyhose pulled on. And that's some of you folks, some of you guys, I understand. Now, some of you ladies, you've got another issue of saying getting ready is a whole different ball of wax. We laugh about it. We joke about it. But what I want to point out to you is in your spiritual life, getting ready is not just putting on a baseball cap and running out the door. It's something more than that. It's not like you're going to Walmart and you can just go with whatever. In the day-to-day -day journey of your spiritual life, you got to get ready. Let me tell you this, Daniel did not just run out the door and put a baseball cap in his spiritual life. We tell the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Facing a, such a tragedy of death and maybe his potential right there in the lion's den. But what do we know about Daniel? Daniel spent time in prayer three times a day, preparing his life, preparing himself for that moment. His very uh, spiritual life was vibrant and alive and real because he had spent this prep time that when he faced the lions, when he faced the obstacles, he was a rainmaker. He was someone who could make it happen because in that moment his faith was so strong that the very lions' mouths were shut. He endured that may be the worst of experiences of life where the expectation of society around would be that you're going to be devoured, yet he became the victor. Do we realize how important it is that we're ready, that we've spent time getting ready within our spiritual lives? For as we become that kind of people, we then are the rainmakers of the world. This is what we're called to do, transforming ourselves in turn to transform the world. And wow, have we not seen some rain happen this week. We're talking about shift, that rain that changed everything, that watered the dry land, that made uh, that which may have seen uh, in a drought condition to now spring forth with uh, the abundance of hope and possibilities available to America as a nation as we express equality for all in a greater dimension. How amazing that is when we think about it. For this shift today, think about it. Think about 20 years ago. Today, 61% of Americans already approve of same-sex marriage. 58% of young Republicans approve of same-sex marriage. The 5-4 to four Supreme Court ruling affirms same-sex marriage. Have we not seen some shift happen? Wow! 
major shift taking place. We've seen some major rain come down. We've seen some major uh, impact upon the world of consciousness and change happening in our world. And it happens for each and every one of us when we are open to changing our thoughts. We then impact the world. We then do so with this wonderful power of creating shift. But why shift? What do we need to shift for? Why do we need to make these changes? Why can't we just stay in the status quo? Why can't we just be the same old, same old? You know, if it was good yesterday, why can't it be good today? Why can't our thinking and our consciousness of 50 years ago, 100 years ago be the same? Why, oh why, do we have to constantly make shifts and make changes? Because our very calling is that we're called to be creators of a world that works for everyone, not just a few. We're called to create a world that works for everyone, not just a few. For the world that God created is not a world for a privileged sector. It is a world that everyone experiences equality, fairness, and justice. It's a world that where everyone to experience the fullness and the abundance, the goodness of God, all equally with the same opportunities. That's what we're called to do. That's what our calling is as children of God. And we understand that we're called to make this shift. We're called to make some rain in a world that's struggling and dying in drought, looking for someone to bring that nurturing new thought and ideas, that new consciousness, that new awareness to us, that waters the soul, that waters the spirit, that enables us to awaken to this very calling and to live it out with strength. We're called to be a creator of a world of oneness, a world of oneness. That is, Reverend Claudia spoke in her beautiful prayer and a, a challenging us to embrace this very understanding that we are all one children of God. This is the very essence of that Acts chapter 17 passage that says, it's easy to discover God for God is right here for you are all offspring. We are all family. We're all in that. And that's the shift that the world is embracing today. The world is progressing then to this higher consciousness, awakening and moving. It's ever increasing within our spiritual essence as we move from what we might call a normal thinking to moving to a spiritual plane of understanding. Moving from that normal thought, that everyday thought that wants to come from the world around us that just may wear us down, beat us down, tell us no. How many of you woke up today saying, I'm fearless? How many of you crawled out of bed and said, I am just so powerful? I am just filled with the amazing uh, power and strength of God. You no, know, most of us woke up and go, oh, coffee, please. That may be our first response. That may be our normal thinking. But you see, the very call of God, if we're going to be rainmakers, if we're going to be those who are creating shift and change in the world, it's an awakening to who we are. It's an awakening that we go beyond this normal thinking, this normal everyday life, and we discover that we live and move in God. And that's our message every single day. I am living with a power of life. I am moving with the power of strength. And I have that power that is my everyday understanding of my purpose and calling. I welcome that wisdom. These are the things that happen then in our lives. We become that rainmaker. Things happen in this one power that we move and we live in where we begin to begin to change our focus from the fears that be around us. Now, there's been a lot of people who still want to walk in fear, even though we've seen some shifts. A lot of people are still going to hold on to this concept that, you know, we need to be afraid of all this change. We need to be afraid of what's happening. What's next? We allow gay marriage. What's next going to happen in our world, you know? Are we going to be marrying animals? And, you know, there's people in fear. They're going on and on with all kinds of strange conversations. It's when we change our focus from the fear and the, the idea that there may be two powers in this world, but there's only one power. Get this idea? There's only one power. There's only one God. There's only one power, and everything else is the absence of that power. We under, have to understand that we have nothing to fear when we hold to that one power. It's when we move from that, and, we, and our eyes and our focus begin, oh, wait a minute, there's two powers. There's good and there's evil, and I exonerate evil. I lift up evil. We're going to talk about evil. We're going to focus on evil. We're going to be afraid of evil. We're going to be frightened by it, and suddenly we create and manifest in that consciousness. But instead, when we hold to, there is one power, and that is God. That one power is at work. 
I have nothing to be afraid of. There is no fear within my heart and our lives. Because that one power shines out everything. It's, it's like light, light in the darkness. You know how it is when you turn a light on? Where's the darkness? It's gone. Darkness only exists in the absence of the light. Evil only exists in the absence of the awareness of the all good. Ever been in those environments where it's all light all the time? Anybody have you ever been to Finland or maybe up towards the Nordic Circle, Alaska and some of these areas where it's the land of the midnight sun? Land where there is 24 hours of day. I bet you just came from Alaska, right? Exactly. Maybe experiencing some of that in some of your journeys up there. When we experience that land of that midnight sun, in other words, it's all daylight constantly. And we're looking, where's the darkness? Where's the darkness? In fact, some people are actually craving for the darkness so they can sleep. <laughs> but you see, there is no darkness when we're in the light. You are called to be the light of the world. You're called to bring that light to the world. And in that darkness flees. And when you are walking in this knowledge of this one power, one presence that is divine at work within me, everything else flees and runs. There is nothing to fear but only that amazing future. So I invite you to renew your mind, is what the passages are saying. Today's journey from Romans 12 says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, which are all fear-based, but let God transform you into that new person. Transform or renew within you. Anybody do any furniture refurbishing, renewal, refinishing? You know what that's like. What you're doing is bringing that piece of furniture back to its original state right? So this very passage is saying, God is calling you to come back to your original state. Renew your mind. Come back to the goodness of consciousness that was innately there, that was given to you all through the ages. We think sometimes we're born in this sinful nature. We got this idea that somehow we're just such bad, sinful thing. We sing these songs, what a wretch am I? We sing these songs that I am, you know, this kind of person who is uh, sinful and uh, we sort of beat each other down with these phrases and thoughts and concepts that well, there's, not, there's no goodness within human nature. But that's very contrary to the very teaching of God's Word. For within that is saying, renew, go back to your original, get back to the... And what is the original? What, your evil ways? Is God saying, renew your mind? That means go back to the original thinking, go back to the old... Go back to the ways of evil or being in sin. No, it's go back to the original blessing, the wonderful understanding of the goodness that is there for you in your life. Come back, reestablish, to be born anew, to renew our mind, to be born again, to be established, uh, reestablish that which is there all along in our thinking. You're to go back, return to that original blessing. If you're going to be that kind of rainmaker, this is what happens. Do you know how rain is actually made? You know how it happens? Some of you may be great biology and science majors. Some of you may already have that concept in mind, but you know how it is. Something begins to get warm, that moisture begins to boil, and it begins to rise. You put that lid on that boiling pot, and what happens? You see that steam rising and condensation happening. It hits a different temperature, and beads of water begin to form out of that. As it rises to another, to a le another region, that sort of, that a in our atmosphere, that warm water that is evaporating now is rising up into the clouds. And what happens, it hits a different atmosphere. It has a different way of thinking, a different way of being, or should we say. And suddenly that condensation happens and rain comes down. You want to be a rainmaker. You want to be a rainmaker that God has called you to be. You want a world changer. It begins that in our higher consciousness, as things begin to rise, there is a different atmosphere, a renewed way of thinking. There is a spirituality that has come bring to us to say that in this essence, it is love that wins. In this domain, it is this understanding that we are creating a world that works for everyone, not just a few. And suddenly what happens is that which has been rising has changed its form and begins to rain down upon your world around you. How amazing it is. Today I'm inviting you to make rain. That's right. Make rain. That the blessings will come when you change the temperature or the atmosphere of your own life. When you change the consciousness of your own thinking. 
When you begin to do so, suddenly your world changes by the rain that you're making in the world around you. You're making things happen. Today we're celebrating an amazing journey of people who have made rain for us. Will we make rain for others? I think of 1968 Reverend Troy Perry, who is a Georgia Pentecostal preacher who left Georgia and went across the nation to California with a passage in, a passion in his heart that says, I believe that in God there are no second-class persons. And I'm creating a church, a message that says all are welcomed equally. His consciousness was changing from an environment that had said, no, 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 you're not welcome, and the church is not welcoming gays, lesbians, bisexual, transgender, or people who are different in any shape or form. But he said, I'm going to make some rain in California. I love that because suddenly he made some rain and began to acknowledge that there was a place for everyone to come and find God. And today, 40 some years later, we have MCC churches that are celebrating this message where no one is a second class person and that all are welcome. That very spirit of inclusion spread across our nation and today has influenced thousands of spiritual communities and temples and worship centers. By the way, did you know that MCC started the very first gay and lesbian Jewish temple? There were, in Troy's church, there were so many people who were coming that were Jewish, and one night they canceled the Sunday night service. They had phone numbers, this is 68, they had telephone numbers, landlines of only a few people, and the only people that showed up were Jewish for the Sunday night service. Everyone else had gotten the word that had been canceled. And when they realized, wow, there are this many people of a Jewish faith coming to the MCC, and coming to celebrate in community and strength, well, let's help you start the very first Jewish temple. Wow, that's a, we're making some rain. We're seeing some transformation. We're seeing some shift happening. We're seeing amazing things happen. How about the people here? Let's bring it home to us. In 1993, this congregation said, we're going to make some rain on Tully Road. They moved from where they were in a location of Virginia Highlands in a movie theater there with great faith saying, we're going to move to a new place. Raised a consciousness and a new awareness that says that we can move and do amazing things in a new place with even more space and more facility. And today we've sold this building. We'll close July 9th. We will have sold it for seven times what we paid for it in 1993. What happens with those people? What happened? Reverend Troy Perry changed some consciousness. What happened to this congregation in 1993? They changed some consciousness. They began to think in a new way. They began to look at their lives in a new way. And they made some rain. And today, let me tell you this. Because of that, we need to get our umbrellas up. Because, honey, it is pouring. The Spirit is falling in dynamic ways because of these people. The people have gone before us. The people have made a way for us. The people have allowed all these wonderful things to manifest for us that we're experiencing today. As I close, I want to offer you this. Are you ready to make some rain? You can. And this is your calling. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Let that be your passion and your calling in your life. Don't let anyone say you're too busy and don't let that word come to yours because the very first and most important thing is your inner spiritual work that you need to work on. Find yourself in classes. Find yourself in worship. Put this as your number one priority of your life. It is that which will move you through this world. If you want to be the rainmaker and you're receiving that call and saying, yes, it's time to transform your consciousness and think a new way, letting go of the old and welcoming the new, you want to be that rainmaker that transforms the world and creates shifts that manifests amazing things. I invite you then to be that kind of person that just lets this new consciousness arise and let it pour down on the world around you with a new way, a new outlook. Let me ask you, are you ready to make some rain? If so, I'd like to hear you put your umbrella up right now because we're going to make it rain. Amen.